Good day, grade nine science students. Today, what we're learning about is ecology. Again, this is lesson number two. And below me, if you look there, that's a Tasmanian tiger. The Tasmanian tiger is an example of an extinct species. Now, the Tasmanian tiger lived in Australia and in Tasmania, and it is extinct now. And there's a bunch of different reasons why that is, which we can talk about. But our learning goal today is just in general to understand an extinct or endangered species. You're about to watch a segment from CNN, and that segment shows you uh, sort of the devastating effects that have happened. So it's a little bit, it does show dead animals. Um, so just there's a little bit of a viewer caution here if you're disturbed by this, but it's a real serious issue that we need to be concerned about because if, if we care about the world's animals, we have a serious issue on our hands at the current time. All around the world, from the savannas of Africa to remote islands in the Pacific, there is a mass extinction brewing. All right, start counting. Elephant seven. Species are vanishing at roughly 100 times the normal rate. If current trends continue, African elephants could be extinct in as few as 20 years, and coral reefs gone soon after that. The insects that pollinate our food are in trouble, as are these plastic-filled birds. In all, biologists fear the unthinkable three quarters of all known species could disappear in just a couple centuries. We've never seen anything like this. In all of Earth's history, there have only been five mass extinction events, one of which killed the dinosaurs. Now, biologists say we are on the verge of the sixth. What are we doing to cause this, and is it too late to stop? CNN reporters traveled the globe trying to understand the... So as you can see, we have a big issue with extinction in our world today. And over the past 170 years, uh, we've had 12 species become extinct in Canada, but that number has increased. And right now there's over 250 plants and animals that are at risk of becoming extinct. The bald eagle is actually a great example. While it's not extinct, and it's, it's a real good success story about how we, we saved an animal from extinction. Um, but it this story that I'm about to tell you really does a good job of illustrating the interdependence between animals and other animals, including in their food source. So when we talk about a bald eagle, uh, in the 1960s, you can see above me here, there's a picture of uh, a man spraying DDT, which is a, we now know is a chemical that's very dangerous, cancer causing chemical. We spraying on a bunch of kids in a pool. They used to think that DDT was not toxic at all in the 1960s. They were wrong. And really DDT had a huge impact on the eagle. Now what they found was, is that the DDT at first was in very, very low concentrations of fish. But something interesting happened. It was actually in very, very high concentrations in the eagle. Well, let's talk about why. In order to survive, an eagle has to consume a lot of fish. Even if the fish have low level concentrations of DDT, that DDT sticks in the fat of that fish. And when the eagle eats that fish, that DDT transfers from the fat of the fish to the eagle. And that fat, uh, sorry, that DDT in that fish does not get metabolized very quickly. So what ends up happening is over time, the eagle gets a very, very high concentration of DDT into its system. This process resulted in the bioamplification in top predators because they eat lots of fish. Bioamplification means the concentration of DDT gets higher as you go up in predators. So the health of a top level carnivore indicates the overall health of an ecosystem. It also means that as humans, we don't want to eat a lot of predators because predators actually have higher concentrations of chemicals in them through this process. So if you eat a lot of, this is why you're not supposed to eat shark, or other predators like that because they contain high levels of toxins in them through the result of bioamplification. Unfortunately for the eagles in the early, late 60s, they didn't produce a lot of young. And the reason why is that the DDT didn't impact the health of the eagle directly, it impacted them indirectly in how they reproduced, specifically in the calcium metabolism, which resulted in very thin eggs, which would crack frequently, and so therefore the, the young wouldn't survive. And many eagles themselves were born with abnormalities that prevented them from being... 100 years ago at the Cincinnati Zoo, 
Martha the passenger pigeon passed away. She left no one in her wake, no mates, no offsprings. Martha was the very last of her kind. It's believed that there were over 5 billion of these birds when Europeans first arrived in North America. That would be one out of every four birds at the time. In fact, passenger pigeons were so abundant that in 1866 an immense flock was observed over southern Ontario. Witnesses described these flocks as giant black clouds of birds filling the sky, effectively turning day into night. Passenger pigeons went from being one of the most abundant birds in the world to total extinction in the 20th century. So what happened exactly? Well, it turns out that the passenger pigeons were simply too tempting for humans to pass up. They were abundant, tasty, and easy to hunt. The fast food of its day. At the same time, feeding and nesting sites declined as urban and agricultural areas expanded. These poor birds didn't stand a chance. The passenger pigeon, which is right beside me down here, is one of the most famous examples of a Canadian species that has gone extinct. Now, again, this happened in 1914, um, and it was from overhunting. Now, the blue walleye up here beside me here now, this one was also uh, an important species that we used as a food source, but we overfished, and now it's gone. And similarly, the great auk, which was a very, very large, like, penguin-type bird was a flightless bird it was killed off in 1844 these are some of the common examples of canadian extinct species now as we mentioned earlier humans have had a profound effect on the extinction of species for example in 8000 bc to 1600 a.d when our population was not that large one species would become extinct every four years this is through fossil records and predictions today the extinction rate is close to one species every 30 minutes now why is that well, one of the reasons that we can think about is uh, hunting. We overhunt, but also because there's so many of us. It's a huge overpopulation. And because there's so many of us and because we're getting more wealthy and as time goes on, more and more people are becoming more wealthy. In the past 10 years, China has produced 300 million middle class people. They want more things. They require more resources. And things like urban sprawl, which is which we're going to talk about, is people want to live in the suburbs. They want a better quality of life. You require more things. That means more mining and drilling. That means more food, which means more pesticides and more herbicides. Indirectly, other causes that cause uh, species to go extinct are climate change, which we've talked about before, and mass extinctions, which we're going to talk further about. Sometimes we just we don't uh, know when to stop in terms of overusing the Earth's resources and other things that may happen like competition and predation which are sort of indirect causes of extinction. In Canada, the status of species is monitored by the Committee of Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada. The committee has members from governments, universities, other agencies and indigenous people. So experts on this committee use the data of species at risk to categorize them into the following categories. One is extinct, which is obviously not found. Another is endangered, which is close to extinction. Another is extirpated, which no longer exists in one part of Canada. For example, the grizzly bear is found in Alberta and British Columbia, but is not found in Manitoba and Saskatchewan anymore. Threatened, which would be likely to become endangered, so one step uh, better than endangered if vulnerable factors are not reversed for example the wood bison which only exists in certain areas in Canada and then we have special concern which have different factors may become threatened or endangered because of special combination of factors in extinction can have some devastating effects on an ecosystem and we need to understand we need to know what biodiversity is biodiversity is the number of species in an ecosystem okay and so the more biodiversity the better if there's low biodiversity that means if one species becomes extinct that one species could be a food source the only food source for another uh, animal and that means it can cause a domino effect if that one species which is a food source goes extinct that means it's likely that the animal that eats that food source will also become extinct if you have more biodiversity, that means that a, a species probably has more than one food source. If one food source goes extinct, that means that in that biodiverse ecosystem, that animal has choices. 
it can eat other food and will not go um, extinct as well. So biodiversity is a good thing and it can cause an entire ecosystem to collapse if you don't have enough biodiversity. And so animals depend on each other for survival. This is the interdependence idea. So again, to summarize, biodiversity is the degree of variation of life forms within a given ecosystem. Greater biodiversity in an ecosystem implies that there's greater health in that ecosystem. Biodiversity also means a few other things which we're going to talk about as we go through the unit. Thanks very much. That's the end of the video.